Hi everyone, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're talking about smoke. Over the past year or so, I seem to have developed a bit of a habit. 18 months ago, I'd never owned a single model with a smoke unit or a steam generator. And now it seems that I've got a number of them both in double O and G scale. This was all new technology to me, so I thought I'd make a video and share what I'd learned. So let's dive into the history and science behind these smoky locomotives. Now you might think that this smoke technology is relatively new, but it's actually been around since the early days of model trains. Some of the very earliest models were actually steam powered, so there was no issue creating steam and smoke there. But once models started to be powered by electricity, then manufacturers needed a way to artificially generate some smoke. Back in the 1940s and 50s, Lionel trains in the US used smoke pellets. You popped one in the chimney, it melted and out came the smoke. I don't have any to show you unfortunately, but Brian over at Brian's Train Room has made a fantastic video looking at the early pellet-based systems that Lionel used, and it's definitely worth checking out. But the pellet-based system didn't last long, and in the late 1950s, a new company emerged that would go on to become the most widely used smoke unit manufacturer in the world, and whose brand would be synonymous with smoke even today. This is my Hornby P2, and it's been retrofitted with a Sooth smoke unit that looks a little bit like this, and you can just about see the top of it if you look down the chimney. This little German invention has been used to generate smoke in model trains for over 70 years. Sooth units work using a heated element, you add a few drops of mineral oil-based smoke fluid, and when power is applied, usually 10 to 16 volts, depending on the unit you're using, the coil heats up and vaporizes the oil. On older analog models, the units were wired in parallel with the motor, so the more voltage you applied to the motor, the faster the model went and the more smoke would be produced. Whereas this P2 is digital and the Sooth unit is wired to an auxiliary function. And if I hold this down, we should get some smoke. And what we're seeing actually isn't smoke, it's thousands of droplets of oil being suspended in the air and when the hot oil meets the cooler air it condenses and forms a fog so what we're seeing is not technically smoke it's fog and these sooth oil based units have been used in commercially produced models for decades marklin produced a model in 1960 and trying hornby started to incorporate them from 1961. the unit i have here is actually from an early 60s britannia in the mid 60s, Hornby created their own system called Synchro Smoke. Their system still involved the heating of an oil based fluid, but also incorporated a piston that would push the smoke out of the chimney in sync with the rotation of the wheels, and that added a bit more realism. These days, we can add the realism and the synchronization using the decoder. And these Sioux style units aren't just for 00 scale locomotives. Here we've got one of my G scale LGB locos, Gertrude, and it came pre-installed with a Sooth unit. As you can see though, there's not a lot of smoke coming out of it. It's just wisping out the chimney. And if there's any wind, it's immediately blown away. I think there probably should be a bit more smoke being produced, given that it's a far larger Sooth unit than the one in the P2. It might be that this unit needs a bit of a clean and service, or it could be because I'm only feeding the track with 19 volts rather than 20 to 24, and apparently that can make a big difference. Let me know what you think in the comments if you've got any suggestions on how I can get more smoke out of this locomotive. But I suppose that's one of the big downsides of these units is that you've got very little control over how much smoke that they produce. And there are other downsides too. Because they rely on a heating element, this means that they can get pretty hot and you need to make sure you're using the right unit for your model to avoid damaging it. Suppliers of the oil say that it's safe, but they also don't recommend breathing it in for too long, which suggests it's probably not that good for you. If the units run dry, they can also damage themselves when they overheat. And if you run them for a long time, you might find that it leaves an oily residue on your model or your layout. So what's the alternative? 
This is Hornby's new Flying Scotsman, and I made a video about it a while back. And if I turn the sound on, the smoke you're seeing isn't from a sooth unit and there's no oil involved, it's water. Instead of heating oil, it uses an ultrasonic atomizer, basically a disc that vibrates really fast to break the water into a mist. The water's vaporized and exits through the chimney and it's synchronized to the chuffing noise from the sound decoder. There's a small water reservoir that you fill up here and it lasts for around 15 minutes or so before needing to be topped up. I'm gonna turn it off because it is very noisy. Hornby have started to put this tech into a few newer models now. It's cool to the touch, it's clean and it's digitally controllable. Obviously you need to be careful with water around electronics, but generally to me, it seems like the better option. If you were to run lots of these locos for long periods, then you might have some issues with the water vapor, but the quantities involved really are very small. We're talking a couple of milliliters. It's a fantastic bit of tech and very visually convincing, especially when timed with sounds. But there's someone who's taken this technology even further. TRS Trains are a UK based company and they've taken full advantage of this new water based system. They've developed ultra realistic synchronized smoke systems that can be fitted to diesels or steam locos and some even have smoke that can come out from around the cylinders. So there we go, from waxy pellets in post-war America to hot oil from Germany and finally digital ultrasonic water vapour. Smoke units and steam generators have definitely come a long way. And I think it's one of those features that can split opinion. Some people love it, some not so much. Personally, I think it looks pretty cool, but it's not a make or break feature for me on a model. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks to Carl from TRS Trains and Brian from Brian's Train Room for letting me use some of their footage. Definitely go check them out. Special thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support, it's very much appreciated and your names will be up on the screen now. That's about it for this video, thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.